Hey there, kids. It is Tuesday, June 15th, and today we are going to learn about some analogies. What is an analogy? Let's figure it out. All right, I'm in section two. I'm on page nine. Remember, uh, this section, the page numbers got cut off, so please number the pages, starting with one on the first page. All right, and we should be about halfway through. And I think you should end on page 14 also. So we're on page nine here. Uh, this deals with analogies, okay? Um, analogies are a way to compare things. We already know how to compare things using comparative adjectives, as in um, elephants are bigger than humans, or the blue whale is the biggest animal in the world, all right? However, uh, analogies compare how things are related to each other, all right? So let's see exactly what we're doing here. So here's an analogy. Example, finger is to hand as toe is to foot, okay? Um, the finger is part of your hand and a toe is just like a finger, but it's on your foot, okay? And notice here I have used one hand and one finger and one toe and one foot, okay? So let's make sure we keep everything uh, the same, okay? We wanna match singular, plural, all right? So here we have complete the other analogies. Apple is to tree as flower is to Hmm. All right. So they're trying to help you out. All right. The apple is the fruit of the tree. All right. And it's nice and shiny and red, much like this flower uh, is the same thing for a plant. Okay. Next one. I think this one is kind of easy as long as you can spell. All right. Tire is to car as wheel is to, well, what's this guy writing? As wheel is to bicycle. Make sure you can spell bicycle. It's got a weird spelling. Next one, dealing with parts of the body. Foot is to leg as hand is to, what is that thing? That is an arm. All right, I think that first page was uh, pretty easy. Let's move on to the next page. I'm on page 10 now. Uh, they tried to start you off easy, and this page should be a little bit harder. Hopefully, we'll understand it. Complete each analogy using a word from the box. The first one has been done for you. Once again, we're just comparing related things, all right? We have the word week, as in seven days, bottom, Okay, as in this is the bottom of the screen. This is the top of the screen. Next I have month, all right, as in we are in the month of June. Tiny, as in very, very small. Sentence, as in a bunch of words put together with a verb and some nouns, maybe some adjectives. And we have lake, as in smaller than an ocean, but bigger than a pond, all right? I'm dealing with water. Next, I have out. We should all know that one. It's the opposite of in. And finally, I have the word I, and this is not as in I am, but your eyeballs, all right? So let's see what we have here. Number one says up is to down as in is to out, all right? So why did we choose that? Well, up is the opposite of down and in is the opposite of out, all right? Let's try number two, all right? Minute is to hour, all right? We know minutes, okay? This is an increment of time. And so is this, a minute is smaller than an hour. We can fit 60 minutes in one hour as day is to 
Hmm. All right. Now we've got a couple of words in our word box here. All right. We could say week or month. Let's make sure we're on the right track here. All right. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to read number three here also. Month is to year as week is to blank. All right. So minute is to hour as day is to, I'm going to put week here. Why? Um, because I need week for this next one. Also, um, this is like the next increment up, okay? We can measure time many different ways. We can measure in seconds, very, very small, and then minutes, and then hours, and then days, and weeks, okay? We can keep going on, and then months, and then years, and also decades, and centuries, and eons. We have many, many ways to measure time. All right. Month is to year as week is to, well, we just went over this. What is the next increment up as week is to month, okay? There are about four weeks in each month. Sometimes we have a little bit less or a little bit more, depending on the month. All right, next I have over is to under as top is to, hmm, all right. Over is the opposite of under and top is the opposite of bottom. All right, let's keep going. Next, I have another opposite word. Big is to little as giant, which is also very big, is to, hmm. All right, well, if we look back up top, which one of those words means very, very small? I believe it was tiny. All right, next, number six. Sound is to ear as sight is to, hmm, I'm not sure on this one. I don't remember. Let's think about this, okay? Sound is to ear, all right? The ear takes in sound. We hear sounds with our ears, sight, is the sense used by our eyes, okay? So that is relating another body part. Another body part to the sense that it gives us, okay? We see with our eyes, we hear with our ears. Number seven, page is to book as word is to blank, okay? So uh, a page is part of a book, and you deal with lots of words and books, and a word is part of a sentence, okay? And lastly, wood is to tree, okay? A tree is made out of wood, as water is to, well, I believe we had a lake, okay? A lake is made out of water. All right, there are many, many analogies, but I'm just going over these to let you know ways to compare things, okay? Just remember those are called analogies. Now I'm gonna go over some different types of books. I'm on page 11, all right? And firstly, let's review what fiction and nonfiction means, all right? A fiction book is a book about things that are made up or not true. Fantasy books are fiction. A nonfiction book is about things that have really happened. Books can be classified into more types. So we have many different genres of books. Let me review this word, genre, okay? Or genres if we have more than one, all right? We have lots of types of books, but they can all be divided into fiction, things that are not real, and nonfiction, things that are true or real. All right, so we also have all these other kinds of books, and some of them are uh, fiction, some of them are nonfiction, okay? Mystery, we can have a real life mystery or a mystery that we just made up because we think it's fun. Books that have 
clues that lead to solving a problem or mystery. All right. Um, these are books that you don't really know what's going on until the end of the book. And then, yes, they will solve their problem. Uh, next, we have a biography, a book about a real person's life. All right. And we also had before we went over the word autobiography. What is the difference? Uh, an autobiography is also a book about a real person's life. However, an autobiography means that person wrote their own book, okay? But yeah, a biography is just a book about a real person's life, and it's probably um, a famous person because we all like to know about interesting people. All right, next we have poetry, a collection of poems which may or may not rhyme, okay? A characteristic of poems is that many of them rhyme, uh, but they don't have to, okay? Some poetry does not rhyme, it's just meant to be poetic or artistic. Next, we have fantasy books, which I'm sure you kids know all about those. Books about things that cannot really happen, all right? Many fantasy books, you will have uh, monsters or wizards or lots of magic or something like that. Next, we have a sports book, books about different sports or sports figures. These are probably real books, okay? Non-fictional books. Um, we don't want to know about fake sports. We want to know about real sports. Next, I have travel books, books about going to other places. Yes, you want to travel somewhere, maybe you should read a book about that place to know a bit more about it. All right. So next it says write mystery, biography, poetry, fantasy, sports, or travel next to each title. So here we have the titles of many different books. All right. Um, and let's see here. So um, first we have the life of Helen Keller. I'm not sure if you kids uh, may or may not know who this person is. Um, you should look her up. Google that name, all right? Um, but the life of Helen Keller, she was a real person. So if we're writing about her life, this would be a biography. All right, next it says, let's go to Mexico. We should know that Mexico is a real place, all right? It is a country, it's right next to the US. Well, it's right below the US. Uh, and so this seems to me like a travel book, okay? Or a travel guide. And travel guides definitely are nonfiction. We don't want to read a fake travel guide, then you might get lost wherever you're going. Next we have the case of the missing doll, all right? This tells me if someone is on the case, it means uh, they are trying to find out something. So we need to fit together all these pieces of the puzzle in this mystery. All right, next I have how to play golf, all right? Once again, this would be a non-fictional book and of course, Golf is a sport or sports book. All right, here it says turtle soup and other poems, okay? Obviously, if it's full of poems, this is a poetry book. And next I have Fred's Flying Saucer. This to me seems very fictional. It is not real, okay? It's got aliens. I'm assuming if there's a UFO or a flying saucer, this is a fantasy. All right, let's move on to the next page. Page 12 here says, fiction is, is writing, I'm sorry, fiction writing is inventing stories. The story might be about things that could really happen or things that are realistic, or about things that couldn't possibly happen, fantasy. So this can be a bit tricky, okay? But know that fiction, we can make up things about things that could really happen, all right? 
For example, I went to the store earlier today and bought some groceries. That sounds real, but guess what? I just made it up right now, okay? That is a realistic story. Fantasy, I could say. Earlier today, I flew out the window and went to work, okay? Obviously, I cannot fly. That is fantasy. I'm definitely making that up. But the first story I told sounded real, but it's not, okay? <clears throat> Next, we have nonfiction, okay? This is writing based on facts, things that are true, things that are real. It usually gives information about people, places, or things. A person can often tell while reading whether a story or book is fiction or nonfiction. So let's run through a few examples of this. All right, read the paragraphs below and on page 77, or we've relabeled them as page 12 and 13, determine whether each paragraph is fiction or nonfiction. Circle the letter F for fiction, or the letter N for nonfiction, all right? Once again, fiction, things that are not real, or nonfiction, things that are definitely real. And once again, it gets a bit tricky because we can write fictional stories about uh, things that sound real, but they are not real. All right, so let's go through a couple examples here. And let's read, it says, do not be afraid, little flowers, said the oak. Close your yellow eyes in sleep and trust me. You have made me glad many a time with your sweetness. Now I will take care that the winter shall do you no harm. All right, so we need to know a couple of things here. Um, this word, uh, what is an oak, okay? An oak is a kind of tree. They're usually very big. I'm not sure if you have them in Cambodia, but know that this is a tree. And these wonderful quotation marks here tell me that this tree is talking, okay? Do, 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 do. All right, and who's it talking to? It says, do not be afraid, little flowers. So this Oak, this is a tree talking to some flowers here. Okay, so is this fictional or non fictional? Well, I can definitely tell this is not real. Okay, trees can't talk and they can't talk to flowers either. So this is pure fantasy. Sounds cool though. I wonder what book that is from. All right, next one. The whole team watched as the ball soared over the outfield fence. The game was over. It was hard to walk off the field and face parents, friends, and each other. It had been a long season. Now they would have to settle for second place. All right, so um, this sounds like they are playing baseball to me, all right? And maybe some of these terms don't make sense to you kids because Probably not many of you play baseball in Cambodia. That's okay, all right? Just know that these are baseball terms, and if someone hits the ball over the fence, it's called a home run. All right, um, this sounds to me very real. However, it reads to me like it's a storybook, okay? Um, why does it sound like a storybook? Um, it is getting into people's heads here, okay? It was hard to walk off the field. Now they would have to settle for second place. It's telling you what people are thinking, which I don't know what people are thinking. So this to me sounds fictional. It's reading to me like a storybook. That one's a bit difficult. Let's move on to this one. It says, be careful when you remove the dish from the microwave. This bad boy right over here. It will be very hot, so take care not to get burned by the dish or the hot steam. If time permits, leave the dish in the microwave for two or three minutes to avoid getting burned. It is a good idea to use a pot holder too. All right, pot holder are like those 
big pads we use to protect ourselves from heat, okay? This to me uh, is definitely nonfiction, all right? It seems to me like this is just reading the instructions off the side of uh, some sort of microwavable food here, all right? <clears throat> I'm not sure what we're cooking, but it just sounds like cooking instructions, okay? They're telling you, hey, microwave's hot. Don't burn yourself. All right, let's keep going. Megan and Mariah skipped out to the playground. They enjoyed playing together at recess. Today, it was Mariah's turn to choose what they would do first. To Megan's surprise, Mariah asked, what do you want to do, Megan? I'm going to let you pick since it's your birthday. All right. Um, once again, could this happen? Yes, it could happen. However, once again, this reads to me like it is a storybook, okay? It's telling me what people like. Um, it's got specific things like these girls talking to each other um, that if this was a factual story, I probably wouldn't know exactly what people were saying. Okay, so this um, also, you are getting once again into emotions to Megan's surprise. How do we know she's surprised? Okay, this isn't telling us facts. This is fiction. It could happen. It's realistic, but I think it's fiction. It reads like a book, a storybook, okay? Next we have, it is easy to tell an insect, meaning a, a bug from a spider, all right? Spiders are a little different. An insect has three body parts and six legs. A spider has eight legs and no wings. Of course, if you see the creature spinning a web, you will know what it is. An insect wouldn't want to get too close to the web or it would be stuck. It might become dinner, yum, yum, yummy bugs. All right, this is just stating facts, okay? Uh, insects are a bit different from spiders. They have six legs, spiders have eight legs. We're just telling people things that are true. This is nonfiction, okay? Spider spin webs. This is definitely nonfiction. We're just telling people the facts. All right, let's read this one. It says, my name is Li Cheng and I live in a country that you call China. My home is on the other side of the world from yours. Well, we're in Cambodia, but he's talking to people back in the US. When the sun is rising in my country, it is setting in yours. When it is day at your home, it is night at mine. All right, this seems like this is from a real person. He states his name. He says he's from China. It seems like he's just telling all about China. He's just stating facts, okay? I'm gonna say this is nonfiction. This could be made up. I'm not sure if this is a real person, but to me, it seems like it's real. which you also have to watch out on the internet because there's a lot of fake people on the internet, kids. All right, next we have, Henry washed the dog's foot in cold water from the brook. The dog lay very still for he knew that the boy was trying to help him. This sounds realistic, but it also sounds like it's from a storybook, okay? I don't know what this dog is thinking. How could we know that, okay? It sounds realistic, but it also reads like it's from a book, a storybook, not a travel guide. All right, uh, the last thing I wanna do is go over library skills. A library is a place filled with books. We know that. People can borrow books. I'm sorry, people can borrow the books and take them home. When they are finished reading them, people return the books to the library. Most libraries have two sections. One is for adult books and one is for children's books. A librarian is there to help people find books. All right, 
So all we have to do here is says read each title of each library book on each line write A if the book is written for an adult, meaning a grown up person like me, or C if it's written for a child, kids like you. All right, so number one here, Sam Squirrel goes to, to the, blah, Sam Squirrel goes to the city. All right, so not many squirrels have names and we usually don't keep track of where they're going. I think this is a children's book, okay? Barney Beagle, a beagle is a type of dog. Snoopy is a beagle. Barney Beagle plays baseball. I've never seen a dog play baseball. Um, so this is definitely a children's book. Seems like we're making these up. All right, Sammy's Silly Poems. Once again, this seems kind of like it's trying to be funny. We have the word silly. So I'm gonna say this is another children's book. Understanding your child. All right. You boys and girls are way too young to have your own child. This is definitely an adult book. All right. Number five, learn to play guitar. Hmm. All right. Uh, I would say this is a factual book. This is an adult book. And also, maybe. Some of you kids are learning to play the guitar. Um, I'm gonna say this is both, okay? Next, bake bread in five easy steps. Uh, cooking is something that many adults do if we're baking bread, but also uh, my mother used to have me read recipe books when I was young because cooking is fun, okay? So it, these are definitely adult books, learning to play the guitar and maybe a cookbook. However, children can use them. Maybe your mom or dad is teaching you about one of these things. All right, number seven, the selling of the president. This sounds like a political book, all right? This is, sounds like an adult book. Um, why? Because it's probably factual. It's probably a long book about history, all right? And number eight, Jenny's first party. This definitely sounds like a kid's book. All right. I've had many, many parties. I've had too many birthday parties. So this is about a first party. Um, that's a kid's book. All right, kids. That does it for now. I'll see you in class at 1030 and 1 p.m. Stay safe. Wash your hands. I'll see you then in class. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Bye-bye.